Hey everybody, it's Mike. Tomorrow night, or maybe tonight, uh, December 15th, Wednesday, December 15th, 2021, I will be headlining a show at the Night Shift Brewery in Everett, Massachusetts. That's near Boston. Um, the link to tickets is in my social media bios, at Mike Racine on Twitter, Racine.Mike on Instagram. And then I will be in Boston with Dan Soder at Laugh Boston the rest of the weekend, Thursday to Saturday. I'll be doing uh, five shows. Um, and then after that, on December 23rd, I will be at Caroline's on Broadway here in New York City doing a little uh, co-headlining show with Adam Friedland. Very excited. Very special guest. Uh, can't wait. Hope you guys come out. We're going to have a little after party after the show. If you're in New York City, definitely check that out. And uh, let's start the show. It's the baby's room or the baby's crib is this in like is the, the living room? This is, we call it the boy's room because it's, uh, the baby sleeps in the bed with us because we're Italian. And, mm. uh, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, so this is like, there's like a crib in here for no reason because he sleeps <laughs> with us in the bed. And your mother sleeps in the bed too, right? Don't tell me. <laughs> like a, a few generations of mothers and sons. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to start. Welcome to the show. Do you have your video on? What, what, you're going to put it on fucking YouTube or something, dog? No, 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 I'm just saying it'd be nice to it'd be nice to see your face, but we don't have to. No. Anyway, welcome to the sit-down, everybody. It's me, Mike Racine, um, and I would like to introduce, we have a very special episode today. We get some great guests. We have um, uh, a good friend of mine, one of the funniest guys, I think, on Twitter. And you know he's one of the funniest guys on Twitter because he was banned recently, mm-hmm. and uh, now he's now he's back, and he's building that following back up, so please go follow him on Twitter. Um, actually, please go follow. There's a there's an account that's um, uh, I, well. Anyway, I'll let you plug it, but it's uh, it's my friend Sean McCarthy, former host of the Grub Stakers podcast. Uh, Sean McCarthy. Hey, good to be with you. Um, and where can people follow you on uh, social media? Yeah, I'm on Twitter at Smelly Indian Guy. Um, no, there's a uh, <laughs> Jesus <they Christ>. bit- <laughs> No, there's a guy with that who's, who's using my picture, and uh, that's oh, really? handle. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, yeah, no, I got banned like twice. So now I'm on at not Sean McCarthy, but okay. we'll see. By the time this comes out, it'll probably be banned too. So just a weird, uh, it's a weird world that we're living in. A lot of people are getting banned, seems like for no reason. They banned the uh, Pelosi stock tracker. Oh, which, yeah. It uh, doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't yeah, they know. banned they banned the 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 Maxwell case tracker, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah, just because they posted child pornography. I mean, come on. <laughs> they they banned the account where the guy goes to Chuck E. Cheese and takes pictures of the inside. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is bullshit. And then we're also joined by uh, one of my one of my best friends in the entire world. Maybe my maybe my best friend in comedy. If I had to. <laughs> If I had to pick, um, I've known this guy a long time. You might have seen him on Comedy Central's uh, Road to Roast Battle. Um, he's very funny. I also I convinced him to drop out of college. We both dropped out of the same college, which is uh, which which is pretty cool. Uh, Mr. Scott Chaplin is on the show today. Hey, what's up, guys? So, um, yeah, it's nice to have you guys here. As we said before, yeah, multiple generations of Italians. Uh, we all sleep in the same bed um and uh we're here at the sit down we're here we're here podcasting we're doing the last um we're doing the kind of the last uh battle cry for uh for for white men you know that's right podcasting is a great medium if you're a white man i would say it's a great medium for you um it's really the only uh that's where your audience is probably going to be and that's where uh i think i've you know i've found uh it's, you know, you find like a decent amount of, I've, I've, I've been able to build a Patreon from this and I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm very happy about that. But I'm also thinking that maybe it's time soon that I, that I end this show. You know, I'm starting to feel like it's starting to feel like kind of a prison and then it's not growing. And um, I guess I'll, I guess I'll ask you guys, what, what, how do you, how do you know when like uh, something's over, you know? Ooh. When you get a feeling, when you have a feeling that you can't get out of it, 
Because yeah. if you're having that feeling, that means it's over. Because why are you mm-hmm. even thinking about getting out of it? So when mm-hmm. you go, man, I can't get out of this. This feels like I'm trapped. That's when you know you got to get out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's just a feeling. Yeah, it's yeah. Just a feeling. I don't yeah. know. What else would it be? Isn't everything kind of just a feeling? I mean, like, nothing's really written, right? But don't you have, like, fantasies, Mike, about, like, you know, killing your wife and running off with a waitress or something, (laughs) killing your baby, going to Guatemala, getting a new identity? I mean, it doesn't mean it's over. It's just in the back of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think I would. I don't I don't know. It's weird. No one ever thinks they're going to be a kill their wife guy. Like, yeah. I feel like nobody ever like enters a marriage being like, oh, I'll just kill her if I have to. I feel like mm. it's, um, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why people do that. It's definitely not because men are violent. And there's a problem no. with men. I don't, I mean, I know we men are the most tolerant people on earth. It's just that yeah. women push us so relentlessly that right, we right, right, right. eventually have to kill them. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, like no one ever, I don't think anyone ever plans to be a like kill my family guy or like a leave my family guy. I don't think anyone's yeah. ever, but it's just, I, I, I do I do think about that a lot though. I think how do people get to that point where they, uh, where they just can't take it anymore and they push their wife off a of fucking Disney cruise and they, uh, <laughs> and they just leave for milk one day and never come back, mm-hmm. you know? Um. So anyway, you know, I, I have I have had fun. I've had fun doing this show. It's been nice. We've got some good uh, we've got some good guests on. But I, I'm also thinking like, I mean, the show hasn't been crazy successful. There, there's people who listen to it and like it. The show hasn't been like crazy successful. And I'm also thinking like, what is it that makes a successful podcast? Why is it that there's some podcasts that people listen to a lot, like a lot of people listen to? And mm. there's some that are just like, you know, when you, you know, there's just uh that don't reach those those numbers i always think about that what am i doing what am i doing differently that you know well what do you you say to yourself when when you think about that i think it's just i think it's just not putting enough effort into it i mean maybe if i tried harder to like book guests and format the show and post clips and stuff i would have more i would have more i don't know maybe i could build it more but i'm still you know doing stand up and doing other stuff so i don't know yeah, maybe if you like neglect your son more to work harder on the podcast. Right, right, right. That's right, the right. problem. You're right. raising a child instead of podcasting yeah. all the that time. Is, yeah, that is the problem. And it is a little, it is a little too much. Um, you know? It's oh, like, yeah, man. Every every great rock star, every great person yeah, has yeah. a family that they completely left behind. That they left behind. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Uh, it, you know what I was thinking about with rock, you know, because I, I got this Chuck Berry CD and like that guy's great. You know, he like invented rock music in the 50s and all that. Mm-hmm. He was like a fucking pedophile. He, he right. did like uh, several years in prison for like transporting a minor across state lines in like 61, 62. Uh-huh. And then he like died and it came out that he like set up this restaurant or these restaurants and he had like cameras in the bathroom and he had to pay out like 60 different women because he was like filming them in the bathroom Mm -hmm. and he had like uh there were like various other lawsuits just related to you know just like fucking like 14 15 year olds and stuff and i was like well you know because he was like the black guy who like invented rock music that all the white people ripped off. So I was Mm. thinking like, well, just in order to like authentically rip it off, they had to rip off the pedophilia too. Mm -hmm. You have to like, you can't actually rock unless you're fucking 15 year olds and filming them when they're in the bathroom. You're saying, you're saying, go ahead. I also think you have to consider what rock was then it, it was for kids. We're, We're not talking about something that was complex or complicated. Like, you know, his songs were about like, you know, ring, ring goes the bell. Like he's like going to school. It's like, what the fuck mm-hmm. are you doing there? You know, yeah. uh, this is who he was trying to appeal to. And also right. teenagers were fairly new at the time, which no one talks about, like the culture of teenager. Like it was uh-huh. just you were a little kid and then you oh. went to work. 
And then right. the culture of teenager kind of came along at, with rock and roll. That's and so then funny. Th- then there was a whole new role to play, which was like set. No one was sexy before rock and roll. Like you were sexy in uh-huh. terms of like you wore a suit or you wore a uh-huh. dress, but no one was like, <laughs> Like sexy, yeah. like a kid was sexy, you know. That's what rock and roll. Right. Did. They were like, "Hey, let's make kids sexy." It's disgusting. Well, it's kind of unfair to think that like you can be seven years old, you can go work in a factory, but you can't get fucked. You yeah. know, like you can. It's the, yeah. the John Stossel argument, <laughs> right? You Just can say, work. Let's in- get Dave Smith on here. He'll make that argument. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually. Um, yeah, you can work a fucking 10 hour shift at a mine, uh, but you can't. Murray Rothbard says that seven year olds can <laughs> fuck just as good as anybody else. And, you know, in a free society, there'd be a there'd be a market for seven year olds. Yeah, maybe someday, maybe someday they'll make a <laughs> it is funny that libertarians always go. They always go to like slavery and fucking kids. That's yeah. their, those are their. Um, I don't not not no. I don't know. I That's like the idea of just like. like just by playing an electric guitar, Chuck Berry made 14 year old sexy. Like nobody thought they were sexy until <laughs> he started rocking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is an interesting point though. The concept of like a 14 year, like a, a teenager being a new thing. Cause that was, that probably happened when, like in the fifties, 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 yeah, yeah. right? 40s was still yeah. like swing and shit. I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. there was teenagers, but. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. not like in the 50s i mean dude like the idea you know sock hops and like places yeah. specifically tailored for young people to go right hang out. right right, what the right, fuck? right they would like burn that place down in the 40s <laughs> what the yeah. fuck are kids doing <laughs> hanging out here you know right Get home right yeah yeah it, yeah it seemed like it was kind of like a special thing to be a teenager in the in the 50s you go you, you go get a milkshake with your girl and uh yeah yeah Chuck Berry invented pedophilia in the 50s and then Elvis made it okay for white people. Elvis ripped it off. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis wasn't even a genuine pedophile. He's just copying Chuck Berry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's awesome. like reverse engineering. You're like, before you even play the guitar, you're like, ah, let's start with the pedophilia. You got to yeah. work backwards from there. They're like, Elvis, this is a great sound. He's like, yeah, I just, I stole it from some black, I stole it from some black ash. And then, and then they're like, I stole this too. <laughs> this 14 year old. Yeah. His finger bang game. game. <laughs> Did, were your grandparents, like were, was it. there a big age difference between both of your grandparents? My Italian grandparents, there were, yeah, they were like nine years apart, which isn't, which isn't even that big. I mean, like, well, it's not big when you think in terms of like, oh, he's 98 and she's 90. But yeah, you know, when she was eight and he was (laughs) fucking 16. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's when he brought a cow over to her parents' farm and and (laughs) asked, (laughs) yeah, asked for permission to, uh, yeah. Um, what were yours? Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, my grandmother was like 16 and my grandfather was 20 or 21, something like that. Yeah, that's not huge. No, and I guess not then where like the, you know, the high school dropout rate was huge. And mm-hmm. Right at it. I don't even know, dude, like I grew up in, in a household where I assumed like before the 70s, nobody mm-hmm. went to college. When mm-hmm. I've like read in later years that people were going to college in the 20s and 30s, and sh- I, I can't even comprehend that. I assumed it literally was something that started right. in, the, in the 70s and 80s because right. no one in my fucking family went to college. Right. And, and the way they explained it to me was that nobody went to college. Right. We didn't go to college because no one went then. And I just right. assumed college started like it, around animal house time. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but really colleges, there were colleges in like the 1700s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like with, you know, during the colonies. That's where they learned right. how to like, how to like beat slaves. That was like the only thing they they learned at college back then. Right. But there's always, there's like a constant reset, I feel like every, I don't even know how many years where we just go like, everybody was dumb. Everybody was like, instead of acting like, oh no, there was brilliant people through time. Mm-hmm. It's like every 50 years or 70 years, like it's like, no, they were morons. Mm -hmm. Reset, you know, Mm -hmm. they were morons. Mm -hmm. Reset. Mm -hmm. There's like a word for that that's in a dictionary, but I forget what it is. When you judge the past based on now, what is that? Oh, I think it's actually anachronistic, I think. 
Yeah, this is so funny. Like, imagine a world where Mike didn't convince you to drop out, and you both know this (laughs) word. (laughs) Yeah, we just stayed in school. (laughs) We just went to online college together, and our our vocabulary is like slightly better. Um, No, but it was. um, I think uh, the GI Bill after World War II is when like mass middle class college started. Like before then, it was just like for the elites, the ruling class. Mm-hmm. No shit. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Like what, what was the first community college and, and who went? It, and it sounds like a scam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, uh, right. Like just stay like, around here. Like what? How? There should really only be like five colleges. Right. And community college is really just a college that you can drive to. Yeah. It's like it's Zoom just, college. Like, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder how they sold that. That's probably how. Sean, you went to college, right? Yeah, yeah. I went to college in Seattle. No. Yeah. Okay. Got a whole you... degree, uh, economics and political science. That's pretty it's cool. kind of like one, one degree between the three of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm a double major, so yeah. <laughs> I've, I've, I can cover Mike and then Scott's oh, nice. the only one without. <laughs> Sean, yeah. uh, why did you pick political science? Because I went to school for political science, but then dropped yeah. out, obviously. I was interested in political science, but at the time I was like, or I was told, you know, it's like right around the 2008 recession. And I was told like, oh, you need like a business degree or something. Because I wanted to do like history poli sci. But then I did econ poli sci because I thought, oh, the econ's like a business degree. I'll get a, a job. And it was, you know, it's fine, but it's. I mean, looking back on it, like everything I know now, I think a lot of college is essentially just like, what do you want to call it? Brainwashing. I mean, it's really just kind of training this, let's say, upper percent strata, upper 20 percent strata of the United States in, in terms of like their ideologies and how to think and all that. Um, and I specifically mean like, you know, I, I listen to immortal technique when i was in high school and i was like yeah man this rocks yeah he's right socialism is good and you know bush he he knocked down the towers and, you know all that <laughs> i remember that song that was him right yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Him, yeah. bush What's knocked that? down the towers yeah <laughs> it was you beep yeah. tell the truth beep <laughs> yeah yeah. But so, and you know, then you go to college or I went to college and I was like, oh, I'm too smart for that now. You know, like I'm, I'm not sure I learned that's not the way the world works. And then like 10 years later, I read like more books. And I'm like, no, actually, that was right. That was just college was like four years where they were like, oh, free trade is good and it doesn't hurt anybody. And uh, conspiracies are all fake. And uh, <laughs> and then I just had to like train myself out of that. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, every, every kid I went to, uh, you know, because I, I went for political science, too. And it was like all people who wanted to run for mayor yeah. like at 19, <laughs> you know. Well, it's like you look at, yeah. let's say, the uh, the language of modern progressive liberalism or whatever. I mean, you guys probably as college dropouts were not as exposed to it as people who like went through the whole like four year ringer are where right. it's kind of like part of your college education now is learning how to talk uh you you, learning these like very specific and ever-changing terminologies of like oh you can't say retarded and you can't call things gay anymore and uh you know you gotta (laughs) wait was was there ever college when they were like (laughs) 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 explaining how where to say retarded (laughs) Only the wisest men know where to place it. <laughs> yeah. I, I do remember we had a seminar because I did two years of college. We had a seminar one time and this guy, he was like the count. He was some kind of counselor at our school. And he was like, and he was just like, yeah, my name is John Velasquez. And um, and he, he like gave us this talk about like racism and sexism and homophobia. And he's like, so like, you know, what are like, what are like some slurs? <laughs> he like asked. He asked, rocks. This, he asked this group of theater majors like what are like what's a slur that you and there was this girl her name was like molly or something and she was like uh she was like this quiet like kind of kind of homey looking girl and she was like well i'm not gonna say it and he was like no come on say it <laughs> and, she's, and she says the n-word oh hell yeah. oh, no. that's so good he, he like because he like coaxed it out of her he like he like he like 
dragged the N word out of her. And he's like, that's right. And then he goes, it, boom, like, uh, you know, N word. Uh, let's say some other, like, what are some other ones? And we all just like went around like <laughs> saying slurs. And he's like, so what are the effects when you call someone? At, uh, uh, <laughs> just, like, that's like hard, God, see hard the- R. <laughs> That's what this is what's missing from Saturday Night Live. That'd be great. Just like Mm -hmm. mousy, quiet white girl (laughs) being made to say the N word. That's comedy right there. Mm -hmm. I remember I had a feminist film class and one of the films, it definitely wasn't a movie, uh, was just a bunch of vagina, like close ups of vagina. Did you guys see this? Did you have any class like this? It, It must have been important at some point to I mean, to be shown, right? It was yeah. it's from like the 70s and, and it, it's just a bunch of vaginas. And then at one point there's like a baby vagina. That's like a twist, you know, mm-hmm. Jesus really Christ. terrible. And then we had to discuss it after it was a whole class after that. We talked about what it meant. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's really like similar. Like the... Go ahead. Go ahead. It's similar to the vagina monologues or whatever, where that was like empowering at one point. But now, you know, the, the talking points have been updated. So mm-hmm. it's just sort of. I mean, like I said, it's it's so much of this this particular language of the top 20 percent ruling class, but it's just like changing and being updated all the time. So it's like part of how they all kind of like compete for these, let's say, fake jobs in education or uh, HR or anti-racism training or whatever is just by like purging each other and constantly updating their little rule book of what you are and are not allowed to say. So that's kind of like the, the purpose that college serves now, mm-hmm. not so much about education. It is funny how every few months there's a white woman who's pretending to be a, a WOC and she gets, Oh, they love out. it. That's how, that, but I guess that's how they purge each other. Yes. By snitching. Well, that's like white women's favorite things is like having fake diseases like long COVID and pretending to be black women, <laughs> pretending to be Native American women, <laughs> just putting on bad spray tan and having fibromyalgia. <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of that's kind of I mean, at least the left's plan, right, in, in politics, at least where it's like. There's no way they actually believe in this cancel shit, but they see it as a tool to get rid of enemies without having to get rid of enemies. Right. Because everybody wants everybody to fucking disappear in politics. They just want to be the only people standing. So if there's this movement where people are getting canceled or people being reprimanded for things they've said, they go, oh, my God, the right. That's all they fucking do. You know that all they do is say racist shit and stupid shit and awful shit. So if that's cancelable, therefore, like we don't have to worry about them in elections. We don't like that's the idea behind it, right? Yeah, mm. it's it's it's, a, it's assassination. It's like a way. It's it's a way of of being like sniped out. Yeah, it, yeah. Like JFK think, would have been canceled, right? They would have found a way to. Right. Yeah, I think so. I was thinking about that. I mean, like. You know, like or John Lennon's another one where like I there's this great documentary drugs. Or it's a book to drugs as weapons against us. And they kind of talk about how like, you know, the, the CIA and some other agencies, they did, you know, promote domestic drug use among like activists in the 60s and stuff. And part of that was they were trying to get them to be like depoliticized. You know, you don't like they don't want them active in, in politics or trying to change things just like. You know, what's the Timothy Leary slogan? Tune in, uh, drop out. Fuck, tune in, whatever drop it is. out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're just like, yeah, just take acid and don't um, tune in, turn on, drop out. I think that was it. But anyway, just like take yeah. acid, don't get yeah. engaged. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, so it's like, uh, oh, yeah. But oh, my point of, the, of that was in that documentary, they mentioned something that was kind of weird is that, you know, when John Lennon was shot, apparently the fucking, um, the doorman at the Dakota, the the um, the the place he was shot at, it was, was like sucking a- his own dick. <laughs> <laughs> he could have stopped him. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he finally figured it out. That day. Yeah. What and are then you he doing? Hey, I'm being over here. He heard. Oh, excuse God. me, Mr. Lennon. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. <laughs> It's like, it was like, yeah, half JFK Secret <laughs> Service just figured it out that morning. John Lennon's <laughs> like, help, I've been shot. The guy's just like, just giving himself dough. <laughs> the best, yeah, best yeah. dough he he's busts ever had. his face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue, Sean. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, um, 
the doorman at the Dakota that night, he was like a former uh, Bay of Pigs veteran. He was like a CIA linked Cuban who's like involved with like CIA assassinations, basically. What? And he's like, he's the guy who arrested or like, to, he's the guy who, let's say, br- who found Mark David Chapman and said, oh, this guy shot John Lennon or whatever. And, you know, he probably did but it's just like a weird story like why is this fucking cia assassin the guy who like tackled mark david chapman the last guy to see john lennon alive and it's like so you know there's theories that john lennon was killed by the cia but to get back to your point what i was saying was like essentially guys like jfk or john lennon like the cia just waited like 20 years they just could have canceled them for being wife beaters yeah. but they right, hadn't right, updated right. they hadn't updated the rules yet so they had to uh, blow their heads off <laughs> right well and that was and that was well chaplin that was kind of charlie chaplin his thing where you know they they were accusing him of communism and stuff and they and then they had this thing where he was with an underage girl right and that's how they kind of mm. got him so they're like chaplin Charlie Chaplin, he's completely clean. We we watched him fuck a 14-year-old <laughs> for three days straight. And then we got nothing on the guy. Yeah. And they're like, wait, that's does, illegal. All he does is hang out at the local high school and try to pick up, pick up girls. He's clean as a whistle. <laughs> I also love how Chaplin was like accused of being a pedophile. And he was yeah. like, he was like, it's because I'm I might be communist. That's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> right it's a good defense yeah but sean it's it's funny that you bring up like uh you know uh, like college kind of policing language because i feel like there is kind of this epidemic like there's like you see it in comedy too you see these like kind of you see these younger comics using this language that's like uh kind of dishonest and academic sounding like i heard somebody say something where they were like stereotypes that were trying to uh you know, like this plays into stereotypes that we're trying to combat. And oh, I just God feel forbid. Like, God forbid. Right. Imagine right. there were stereotypes in comedy that were used right. to make a punchline function. Right. If Scott couldn't make fun of Italians, I wouldn't want to be I wouldn't want to be here. I wouldn't. Yeah, what would we it. have to talk about? Iceberg. They're all Jews. <laughs> I do remember I saw I saw Scott. I saw Scott headline Caroline's like a few years ago. And he just kind of like I think he spent like four or five minutes just go just going off on Italians. He said Guinea. And he was like, my father said they're they have brown eyes because they're full of shit up to here. <laughs> and um it was very fun. Yeah, but it's like it, it's like uh everybody, I don't know, everybody in comedy now is just kind of like an educated dumbass well it's interesting i mean i do see what you're talking about where i think a lot of them are they're all on the same track for media careers like mm-hmm. all this language you talk about like okay if you want an msnbc job or if you want like a new york times journalism job or whatever yeah you got to know all these languages and all this rules and such and now it's the same for actors and to a lesser extent the same for musicians but it, uh, it used to be comedy was like somewhat outside of the other artistic world because it's a it's a very let's say unique art form but now it's it's not so much about anything except getting your way or for certain people who are like joining it now it's just about getting your little claws into the general media entertainment sphere which has all these particular rules and using stand-up to do that it's not about like being a good stand-up comedian yeah yeah Thank God for podcasts, am I right? That's right, yes. No, I mean, this is like the most important thing we can do as comedians is go on podcasts and complain about the state of comedy. That's like, there's nothing that that listeners enjoy more than uh, comedians talking about how they got their start and what's wrong with comedy today. Right. All right, well, let's let's shift a little bit. I found some uh, New York Post stories that I want to talk about with you guys. And you guys did ask me about, uh, you know, um, raising a kid and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I, I for, you know, for the most part, it's, it's fine. We were home um, today a good amount. We uh, I got some stuff done and then I got really tired around three o'clock and we uh, we took a nap. But um, I found this I found this story in the New York Post. Uh, Chicago dad beaten to death, hanging Christmas lights outside home. And uh, you never hear about this happening to a mom, you know, it's usually the dad who's hanging the lights. And then sometimes 
You just get it says a Chicago father is beaten to death in front of his young daughter while hanging Christmas lights outside his home. Police said, yeah, Jose Tellez, 49, was attacked by two men who struck the father three in the head with, quote, blunt objects outside his Gage Park home on Sunday evening. According to cops, a neighbor told Fox 32 that she found the victim holding the Christmas lights and bleeding profusely in his front yard after hearing Tellez's young daughter screaming during the attack. Well, that's what he that's what he gets for putting up red lights in a gangster disciples neighborhood. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's uh, that's a bummer. And, you know, it's like what it's in now, December 14th. You know, his wife was like giving him a hard time, you know, like yeah. no Christmas lights. They're supposed to. Be, she's like, they should have been up by Thanksgiving. <laughs> You know, he's probably far behind. And uh, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know why this. It doesn't really say it doesn't doesn't say say he doesn't know the man. No one has been taken into custody and police are still trying to determine the motive. I will say (laughs) this, though, the the amount of effort we're putting we're putting into this is the same amount of effort the Chicago Police Department is putting. in. (laughs) Right, right, right. Do do they know this guy? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, it looks like a guy got uh, beaten to death over here. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll let you know if we find anything. Yeah, Chicago police put out an yeah. APB for uh, uh, Scrooge and the Grinch. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of weird. I mean, I don't know. Maybe like, and it's hard to imagine. I mean, maybe this guy owed somebody money or something or... The neighbor who who found Tellez said he was a good man who kept to himself. She said he couldn't imagine anyone wanting to hurt Tellez. You never know if this guy owed some money or something or whatever. But um, yeah, I don't know. I never understood the idea of killing a person because they owe you money. You don't get the money. Yeah, you don't get the money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the purpose? <laughs> I understand uh, killing someone because they harmed someone you love, like the type of, yeah. you know, rage that would cause a thing like that. Or, right. you know, like something that hurts your soul. So you got to attack a person or whatever the fuck. But like mm-hmm. owed money seems so uh, like all of a sudden you're like the tax. Like, you know, you're like a you're political now, like you're. You know, like you it, it just doesn't seem like uh it seems like something billionaires would do, not something yeah. a regular guy would do. Like, you owe me money, so I'm going to kill you. Yeah. yeah not, not to get all political, but I'm going to break your fucking legs if you don't pay me back next week. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. I just never understood it. It doesn't make any sense. Well, I guess if, like, if you don't, if you owe someone and you don't pay them and it's like a long time and you feel like you're never getting the money, then maybe you have to. You, I'm just I'm just saying in that in that world, you know, and then well, it's, and it's like so now you never owe me money again because you're dead. Yeah. Like none of it. I think it, it more, if anything, it shows why those people don't have money. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like why those people shouldn't be loaning money if, right. if they're like killing. It's just madness. Right. It seems so primitive. Yeah. Because there's no like point A doesn't get to point B. It just none of it makes sense. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, reputation. Like, if one guy doesn't pay you back, right, then he gets away it. with it. Mm, yeah. Okay. Seems like a nice guy, though. Yeah, but then you got to let it out that you killed a guy. Like, it's just so much risk. <laughs> yeah, you got to like, like the pe- the streets have to know, but the cops can't know. It's yeah. it's such a weird uh, tightrope. Yeah. It's like buy, it's like changing your name. You have to like buy an ad in the local paper and let people know you <laughs> killed somebody because they owed you money. Yeah. yeah, that would suck if this guy's like uh if this guy did something though. If if this guy did something fucked up. It would suck for who? <clears throat> it would suck for him. It would suck to like, you know. <laughs> He's dead. It, would... it sucks for him. <laughs> no, but it sucks. No, but it sucks. It sucks to get killed like a revenge thing, you know, uh, like if he did something to somebody's kid or whatever. I, I don't know. I, I doubt it. But yeah, but he's like not a hero. You know? That's the thing. He can't die a hero. So it's really kind of irrelevant. Like he was just either murdered for no reason or because he owed somebody money. Yeah. What if they were like time? They were time travelers and they knew he would become the next Hitler. Like yeah, That's, that's got to have that might have happened at least once. I will tell you this. The next yeah. Hitler is coming from Chicago. I, 
if anywhere has the the the, the type of feeling that Germany yeah. did, you know, mm-hmm. it's Chicago. Yeah, no right. doubt. A lot of serial killers come out of Chicago, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Well, at least like the the old school ones, right? Yeah. yeah. The ones who can't make it in New York City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like, you know, I, I actually like Chicago better anyway. It's just that. <laughs> it's just more laid back and it's easier to kill people out here. Uh, Which is weird because it's cold there. And in the city, mm-hmm. nobody kills each other because it's cold, right? In New York City. Yeah. Like the summers no. is when everybody kills each other. But Chicago, it's like often cold, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um. All right, we got another story over here. This one says uh, Texas Texas businessman paid hitman 750k to kill mistress new man to stop them from exposing affair. So there was a guy who uh, his family had a had a like a dynasty of car dealerships. Mm. He was married. He was fucking this woman. This woman and her new boyfriend were like, "We're gonna, we're, if you don't pay us off, we're gonna expose your affair." Uh, and then, so then he, this guy hired a former Mossad agent, a guy who worked for the IDF and a Mossad agent. He teamed up with two guys who were in the Marines and, uh, they killed the, um, mistress and her new boyfriend, this new boyfriend, poor, poor guy. He must've really thought. And then, uh, the guy's name is Eric, Eric Mound. Who's the, who's the, uh, who owns the dealerships. Um, he was arrested. So was the Mossad agent, Gilad Peled. And then so were the two Marines that helped him, uh, murder the two people. Mm. Um, I feel bad for that new boyfriend. You know, he must've really thought that things were going to be, that things were going to be good, that he was going to get a nice little payday. Yeah. He didn't know how nuts this guy was. Yeah. I wonder what his dealership commercials look like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I could improv, I would do a whole commercial right now, but yeah. yeah. Don't worry. Save it for when we launch our Patreon, Scott. <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you got like a month to practice the impressions and then we got to take the, that's what I'm going to do. He's I'm going like, to work he's on He's like, uh, well, I can, I can improv. I got, I got some sure, improv sure. in me. He's like, yeah, uh, Hey, He's like, come on down to Mound uh, Chevrolet and get fucked in the ass. And, or he's like, or he's like, or don't get fucked. In, I mean, don't get fucked in the ass. Because <laughs> our prices are very fair and we won't fuck you in the ass. I actually, I read this story today. And as yeah. far as, so like basically what happened was this guy, like uh, Mike said, he had, you know, this car dealership empire. And it was like this woman that he like used to be fucking in the past. And then he, um, you know, got married or whatever. And then he was just like in Nashville on a business trip. So he hits up this woman that he used to fuck in the past and they, you know, hook up and all that. And then her boyfriend was like, oh, this is an opportunity. We can make some money by blackmailing him. And then he's like, no, I'm going to fucking hire Mossad agents and kill both yeah. of you for, <laughs> he paid him $750,000, which has got to be like, I don't know how much they were blackmailing him for, but you know, it's a, yeah. uh, it seems like it'd be more. That oh, kind of got the- like quadruple cucked, right? Because one, the guy goes there and fucks his girlfriend. And then he's like, wait, your ex fucked you? Hey, let's uh, extort him for money. No, how about you go <laughs> kick his ass, not extort him, you loser. And then he gets yeah. you murdered. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out like who the biggest scumbag in this story is. I think it's probably the new boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. new boyfriend for sure. Ew. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because he's a uh, he's a uh, he's a potent he's an extorter and he's a potential snitch. Yeah. All very good. wait. Well, how's he a potential snitch? Because he was gonna expose the car dealership guy. He was gonna expose his affair. Ah, uh, yes, of course, yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think we could all admit he broke guy code, right, guys? That's what really matters. He broke guy yes. code. He broke MTV's guy code. Guy code. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to just get like the MTV guy code verdict on like serial murders and <laughs> yeah, the Menendez brothers. <laughs> <laughs> right just have andrew schultz and pete davidson be like all right here's what's up here's what's up <laughs> no you can't you can't be extorting people you know what i'm saying 
Did John Wayne Gacy break guy code? <laughs> yeah. um, um, but no, the uh, the car dealership owner. I think he's actually a good guy because he was hiring veterans. So that's right, you know, right, right. They gotta they gotta work after the service. Hey, does this, is this common that veterans are doing this? This seems like it would be common. It's uh, modestly common. I've read a couple different stories, like in the last few months, about essentially like contract murder or intimidation. Like once you get out of the military, like yeah, you have the skill set, you can make some money. Um. Oh, what I liked. Uh, one other detail from the story is apparently the the car dealership owner, because they had like the Mossad guy who hired the two other uh, killers. They had like some sort of security service. So the, mm-hmm. the car dealership guy, after they did the murder, he left them like a Google review with five stars <laughs> and said <laughs> really? like prompt, prompt and efficient service. I would never use anyone else or something like that. Holy sh- you know, you know what I want to know is like, really, how do you find a hitman in 2021? Because it's, it, because it feels like whenever I would watch those cop shows, it would be like, like every hitman is an undercover cop. It seems like, so I don't know how you find somebody that you trust. I remember like um, seeing one video, it it was some cop that I was watching like years ago. And this couple like tried to hire a hitman to kill their son and they were going to like pay him. (laughs) They were trying to to get their like 13 year old son murdered by a hitman. And they offered the hitman like the kid stereo as partial payment, um, (laughs) which is like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what that kid was up to. that's yeah, what Mr. Months. Wilson did to Dennis the Menace. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that episode? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wilson's getting dragged away. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's getting dragged out of his house with a jacket over his head. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wilson, what happened? Yeah, yeah he's waving <laughs> at him. <laughs> See you later, Mr. Wilson. I'll get you out. <laughs> yeah, there's Is everything a, there's... okay. Yeah. There's there's six months left on my son's Xbox Live account. If you kill him, you can play it. Yeah. So he was 14 years old and they were gonna have him killed. Yeah, but but it but it does seem like anytime somebody tries to hire a hitman, it's always an undercover cop. It does I don't I don't know where you like find a hitman nowadays. Yeah, well, I mean Sean, you do you, do you have any insight? <laughs> I, I guess, like, if you're, like, rich and you have, like, these private security companies, like, mm-hmm. a lot of the, the private security companies are pretty shady to begin with. Mm-hmm. I think it's just, like, so you hire, like, somebody to do, like, to be your bodyguards, you know, mm-hmm. and, okay, they all have guns, they all know how to use them, and then mm-hmm. it's just, like, from there, you know, hey, you want to make, like, you want to make some extra money, extra, yeah. extra money, yeah. you know. Just imagine that new boyfriend was like, I'm going to tell your wife about your affair unless you give us seven thousand dollars. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Yeah. And then <laughs> That's... Two Marines just burst through his windows, <laughs> machine gun him. <laughs> no, I, couldn't, like, yeah. I couldn't find in the articles like how much they were asking for, because yeah. that would be a, that would be like. You know that's that's kind of some alpha male shit where you're like you you can't extort me for ten thousand. I'll spend three right. quarters of a million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To have yeah. you murdered in front yeah, of yeah, your yeah. girlfriend of, of of my father's money. That's <laughs> the principle of it. You know that's yeah, uh, I, that's old school. I can't imagine it was more than like a hundred grand that they were extorting him for. I don't know, but yeah, that is. That well, is when I. Cool. Uh, when I worked at the slaughterhouse, I worked there with a guy who was like mentally challenged and like, like the kind that like, uh, you can say Dominican, the, the kind of, the kind that would go hunting, you know, like not like, uh, you know, like he didn't like sit at home. He was still, he wrote a quad and stuff, you know, but he had, he had mental problems. And, uh, his thing was people in town. He told me, he said at least five people from our town asked him, to kill for him and for mm. to kill for them and they pay him. So I think a lot of people but are really, also they like were just like, can you go give people? They were like, can you just go give that guy a hug for me? <laughs> yeah. They- I, I think like every like uh, crazy person has been asked to kill before by somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. And what did the mentally challenged guy say? No, I'm just happy to, 
work at the slaughterhouse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he just wasn't into it. He's a good heart, you know. Wow. Mm. God bless him. Yeah, I've only been asked by two people. I guess I'm not as <laughs> to commit yeah, murder. As as Dominican, he said. <laughs> Seems like the pay scale is really pretty wide for contract murder. Because it's like what, like ten grand starting, but then you can do like seven hundred and fifty thousand, and there's still like a massive paper trail and no professionalism. Yeah, I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know what the what the market is like. <clears throat> I guess you get what you pay for. Mm. If you paid out a little more, would have been. Yeah, I don't know how these. I, I would you, do a, you find- a genie defense. That I would do a genie defense. I would say I thought he was a genie. I rubbed this lamp. I bring a lamp to court. <laughs> <laughs> Your attorney resigns. <laughs> Won't be associated with this. That kind of sucks, though. You're just like going to Nashville and you're hitting up some some lady that you used to hook up with. Yeah. And it's like her fucking, her shitty, her like loser new boyfriend is just like, yeah, uh, actually... I want five hundred dollars. <laughs> that would be sick. Would be sick. He just wants to take her to like Longhorn Steakhouse or something. No, it was just like this guy, this the uh, the car dealership owner. He just let things slide his entire life, and finally, mm-hmm. it was like, mm-hmm. no, this is it. This is the mm-hmm. this is the line. I'm not mm-hmm. not paying out a thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm getting Mossad and two fucking Marine snipers to. <laughs> apparently they shot the boyfriend and then they put him in a car with the girlfriend and then drove her with his dead body in the car and then shot and killed her. And, uh, see, yeah, see, that's like, I mean, that, that seems a little spiteful to me, right? Like it yeah. seems like these people are, I don't know. These people are kind of sh- like, I like the, it seems like the hitmen were mad at them. Yeah. yeah. There's a rudeness to it almost. Yeah. Yeah, before they shot her, they were like, Jack says that pussy wasn't that good last lo- the last time. Yeah. <laughs> you you kind of weren't moving around enough. He was very disappointed. Yeah, this wasn't like a clean, a clean hit. There that was uh fucking wild. But you know what's funny too? It's like I'm looking at a photo of this guy. I'm looking at a photo of the woman and the new boyfriend. And like mm. the new boyfriend just looks like he's he's got like, you know, four chins. He's just um He's got like red hair. He looks like somebody who I don't know might have stormed the. He just looks like kind of like a, like a bum, you know. I'm gonna look him up. Is the woman hot? Uh, she's uh, she's okay. Yeah, she she's all right. She's what are their hoop, names? She's got hoop earrings. Holly A. Williams, William Lanway. Lanway. Yeah, L A N W A Y. But I don't know. He just looks like you know like some kind of dipshit, I guess. Um. But. It's weird to think he was a baby at some point Mm. because I I was reading this story of all my wife was giving my son a bath, you know, and it's like this guy, at some point he was a baby. (laughs) Yeah. If you don't give the right life lessons, you you got to take your son aside when he's a man and explain to him, don't extort people who have uh, connections to the Mossad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this guy's a big time loser, man. Damn. He seems like a loser. Yeah. I wonder it's and also like why would you why would a woman want to date a guy who's like extorting somebody? You know what I mean? I think like, you kind of fall what into she, that. Yeah, but what is she? I it, it doesn't like that you would think that would kind of I don't know. You think that would turn you off a little bit. Yeah, I think worms, you know, worms are, uh, they, they come out a little later, you know? Yeah. I don't think people act like that up front to anybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Well, why don't we, uh, I guess, <laughs> I guess one of these guys is the, the real ass dude of the week. <laughs> <laughs> it's either that guy that got beaten to death or the um the 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 car, the Texas car dealer guy who who stopped taking shit. That is pretty yeah, like Sean said, that is pretty alpha to spend right. all that money to yeah. Yeah. It's he like wants- this is this is why we grind set so right. that we can have Mossad kill right. people who try to extort us. Right. Um that's why you like uh 
Yeah, that's that's why you save money. That's why you hustle so that someday you can have Mossad connections. <laughs> um, so I'm looking at this other article. I guess this lady is uh, mad at Ben Affleck. Um, ben Affleck was on Howard Stern. He said that uh, he'd probably still be drinking if he never got divorced. And uh, this lady who's writing for the Post is mad about that. Uh, after after saying after saving ex husband Ben Affleck, who can never forget the furious Jack and Jack in the Box and Ruth rehab paparazzi shot, Affleck says he probably still would have been drinking had he stayed married to her. The mother of his three children. Wow. Um, white women really do stay losing. They write drip. They write stuff like this. They get too involved in people's uh, personal lives. Um, nope, not enough that Affleck's conducting a very smug public romance with ex fiance Jennifer Lopez, making Garner look like the runner up and Lopez the one who got away. She's just upset. Oh, and then I guess, like, uh, this lady's also mad because when Ben Affleck <laughs> accepted his Oscar for Argo, Argo won Best Picture, he was like, And I want to thank my wife, you know, I thank you for working on our marriage. It is work, but I, you're, you're the one I want to do the work with. And uh, she was like offended by that. Yeah, nothing's ever good enough. You didn't thank me in your speech. You didn't thank me nice enough. (laughs) Yeah. It is a weird place to say that. It's like, it's how many speeches do you have a year? You know, like you you got to say something like that. Like, just don't fuck it up. Just be nice the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I think everybody probably kind of does know that it is. I, um... It's funny when you have kids, like I, I snapped at my wife a couple of times today, but it's like, there's, there's no, there's no room to, for arguments once you have a hmm. kid. So it's just kind of like, uh, you know, earlier today, I was like, I don't want to be in this fucking house all day. And then uh, I come back and then things are, things are like normal again. Um, so that's good. I don't know what the point I was trying to make there was. <laughs> it, I think you were just saying it's harder to get into fights because right before a fight occurs, like somebody has got to change a diaper or, yeah. mm-hmm. Oh, the baby yeah. needs to be fed. Like, so there's yeah. no room to actually choke each other. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of nice having a kid because you can snap it. You can snap at your partner more and it's not as big of a deal. <laughs> because you, know? you reset back to baby mode. Because you reset back to baby mode. Mm. Yeah. Um, cool. <laughs> no, I well, think it's, a, uh, I don't know. I think generally, let's say white women complaining about Ben Affleck. It's, uh, my personal theory on this is, you know, the wasps, the white angle, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants used to be kind of the ruling, uh, let's say racial group or caste in America, mm-hmm. but now it's mm-hmm. kind of the the affluent white female liberals, they've sort of taken over where basically if they're not like explicitly in charge, they are de facto in charge of most every institution. And they, they really run the country, run the language, run the politics, run everything. But they're also like, they're not happy about it. And they're also Mm -hmm. like in denial that they're the ruling class. Mm -hmm. So we get this like very kind of like, unhappy ruling class that denies that it's the ruling class and this all comes out in like getting mad at leonardo dicaprio for fucking 23 year olds or whatever Mm -hmm. as as if that's political activism right right and you're saying they crave the direction of a the direction and guidance of a man Exactly. Yes. They want Sharia law. You know, that's like, I'm sure if they go back and they pull like Taliban Afghanistan, they're going to be like, well, why did female happiness go up 20 points? <laughs> right, right, right. Like, I guess that's true. Every, everyone just secretly craves Sharia law. <laughs> you just can't resist well, it. The, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, I mean, Mike, you know about this being married where it's like, you're like, I, I'm very bad at imposing structure on myself, you know, but like once you're like in a relationship or serious relationship, you're like, well, structure is imposed on you. Mm-hmm. And that's like good because you can get more done. But you also like resent it and fantasize like, what if I could just leave and do my own thing? Yeah. But if you could, you probably wouldn't actually be happy. You wouldn't be happy. Yeah. So, you know, that's what we say, though, right? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, you maybe it's like cope. Maybe you would actually be happy, but I don't know. I don't. Um, 
but the point is, uh, obviously women would, <laughs> would be happier with, uh, the 19th amendment repealed. Right. <laughs> right. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I think I think maybe I think maybe once once every two months I have a thought. I, I'm like, oh, what if I was just like living in a van by myself, you know? Right. But I think ultimately it is a good being married is a good thing. And you should never you should never cheat because you might find yourself spending seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of your own money to uh, murder your former <laughs> mistress. Every, every time I have a thought like that, like a live away or be on the road, or like I also mm. like have a great tan and abs, so I right, know yeah. it's bullshit. Like I'm almost yeah, like yeah, I have yeah. a nice right. watch and I'm just fucking <laughs> shredded, and everything yeah. looks great on me. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you already know you're, it's super bullshit, you know. You're wearing like a Nike hoodie instead of a the one from the slaughterhouse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the one you got from the slaughterhouse. <laughs> um cool well guys listen any uh any final thoughts anything you wanted to talk about anything we didn't get to discuss i'm gonna wrap it up in a little bit i guess you know mike i'm curious like when you have those fantasies like going away and living in a van by yourself what do you imagine yourself doing like what what do you actually want to do that you feel like you can't do yeah i guess just like i don't know more spots yeah you know just like more common more time to do stuff i mean like uh just not having not having dogs to walk would be nice that's yeah, kind of the yeah, only yeah. thing that's really the only thing just kill the dogs <laughs> I, I, I really get massaged to kill the my, dogs for three quarters of a million <laughs> yeah my whole dog assassins um no if my if my almost 15 year old yorkie was dead i would have i would be a much happier person i just i don't know <laughs> I don't, there's, it's just a weird like prison that I live in that I never asked for. I was never like, I never agreed to this and I'm just stuck having to take this dog out every two hours or he'll piss and shit all over my floor. And uh, it'd be great if Mike hired like a hitman to kill his fucking dog well, that's the thing. off the I'm Patreon. Gonna, well, I'm not going to like, I'm not going to put him down because I'm not like a white woman, but I, I just, I'm trying to like, is there a way that I can like root for him? to die like you know if you talk to plants they grow <laughs> is, there, is there certain are there certain is there are there certain things i can say to this dog that like will make him die are there certain like slurs like anti-dog slurs i can use yeah so i don't just know. get a get a woman dog to nag him am i right yeah yeah exactly <laughs> nag him to death yeah, dude, just um, buy a dog whistle and just blow it in his fucking face <laughs> all the time. That's what I would do. Yeah. yeah. There's got to be, I mean, there's got to be something that I can like just speed up the process a little bit. Because mm-hmm. he's so close. You know? He's shitting. We, he sleeps in a pen at night and we wake up in the morning and there's shit all over the fucking pen. Yeah. And I take uh, him out, you know, before I go to bed. And it's just like, it's making the, you know, it's. Yeah, it's just making everything. I don't. I have no complaints about the baby. The baby is fantastic. We have a fucking sure. fantastic baby. I, oh, I thought I, you were was, talking about the baby. No, I was talking about the no, dog. The dog. <laughs> oh, when you oh, said yeah. cage, I thought you thought it was the baby. Oh, you thought I said I wanted to speed I'm up fucking my... with you. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Um. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Does your dog eat? Yeah, he eats. Oh well, then it's still it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's when until they stop it's eating. like not. Yeah. And then you right. go like, like, like I, I deliver to, uh, to a lot of veterinarians for some reason. And uh-huh. often when I go in there, what I hear someone telling a vet is, uh, he's not eating. And it's uh-huh. like, yeah, that's death, you know, that's cancer. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. usually. Mike, you, you just got to be to Deb. Like, look, I got a great deal. I'm going to import the dog food directly from China. I got a supplier. <laughs> and... Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's so weird too because they i mean he's in diapers and everything but like the diapers don't there aren't like anti-shit diapers they don't cover his ass like a like a baby they're not like baby's diapers or they well, and also everything. he's like it's a hairy ass so it would just become yeah. a mess right it would just become a mess yeah, yeah bad idea dude uh yeah but every other everything else in my life is pretty good right that's exciting yeah um, anyway, well, cool. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining me today, guys. Yeah, this was fun. Good chatting with you guys. Yeah, man. yeah. 
and uh, you guys know the deal. Maybe maybe the three of us will uh, put together a show someday. You know, someday. Who knows? Um, yeah. But you guys know the drill. Uh, if you want, you can support the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash sit down pod, where you get a show four days a week uh, behind the paywall. And uh, that's it. Thank I want to thank my guests, Sean McCarthy, Scott Chaplin, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye bye.